Hello everyone, it's Meg, and welcome to the third part of my World Edit Guide series. In this video, I'll be explaining in detail how to rotate on any angle and how to scale. I apologize in advance if I over explain things, I tried to keep it as condensed as possible, but it was actually kind of difficult. So feel free to just skip around the video and find what you need, I won't be offended. That being said, we should probably get started. To get started, I'm going to assume you already know the basics of rotating where you need to copy it to your clipboard, rotate it on a number of degrees, and then paste it in. Let's go ahead and rotate this minus 90 degrees to the left so that when I paste it in, it should paste right over here to my left. That's easy to understand, right? Now that is just a single rotation, but we can also rotate on any angle by just entering in a few more numbers. So let's talk through this. If I have three numbers here, they're each going to represent a different axis. The first one will be Y, the second one is X, and the third one is Z. Now I know this is a little bit out of order because you want to think, well, shouldn't it be rotate X, Y, Z? Well, maybe it should be, but that's just not how this command works. And I will demonstrate that in just a little bit. So if I wanted to rotate on just the Y, I would enter a number there. If I wanted to rotate on just the X, I would do a zero and then the degrees for X. And of course, if I wanted to rotate on the Z, it would be two zeros and then the degrees for the Z. And if we wanted to rotate on every axis at the same time, we would just enter a number for each one. So that's pretty easy to understand, and you can also change the direction of the rotation by just changing those numbers to negative. Let's go over here and I'll help you visualize what's actually happening when we rotate. I have drawn out here the direction for each axis, the Y obviously going straight up and down. The X goes along the east to west line, and the Z goes from north to south. But that changes when we're rotating. When we rotate, we're actually using those lines as pivot points for the rotation. So when we rotate around Y, it's going to rotate clockwise around the Y axis. When we rotate around the X, it's going to rotate in this direction from south to north. And when we rotate with Z, it's going to rotate from west to east. And if you haven't guessed already, I'm showing here the positive rotations, so if you were to change the numbers to a negative, it would just rotate the opposite direction. Now that we have this knowledge of the rotation direction, let's go ahead and try it out. Let's copy this, and we'll do a couple rotations on it. We'll rotate it once on the Y, 30 degrees, and let's go ahead and rotate it on the X, 45 degrees. So this should angle it to face a little to the right and going downward. So when we paste it in, you can see, yes, it is indeed turning to the right just slightly and angling down just a little bit. Pretty cool. Let's do one more rotation before moving on to the next command. I want my shuttle to be facing straight up. So we will need to rotate it along the x-axis. And if you look at the arrow along our x-axis, we'll need to use a negative number so that the nose of the ship will be facing up. So our command will be rotate 0, minus 90 on the x-axis. Paste that in, and now our shuttle is facing straight up. From what we see here, the slabs obviously don't like rotating in this direction, or we'd have to replace those with full blocks if we wanted to keep it like this. A very important thing to know about using the rotate command is when you do rotate, it will keep that rotation in your clipboard. So if I were to rotate this further, then it would just continue from where we left off. So if I wanted to add some Y and Z rotations in addition to this, I can do that. If I just enter in some numbers for those, then you can see it's actually kept the previous rotation and just added on to it. So that pretty much covers the basics for the rotate command, but I do want to say this. It's really easy to get yourself turned around and confused on which axis you're on, whether it's X or Z. So if you don't want to build your own cheat sheet like I have here, you could just use the in-game cheat sheet, otherwise known as F3. If you're familiar with this at all, you'll know that you can push F3 anytime to see which direction you're facing. And I used to think this was the only way to do this, until I realized I can just look in the middle of my screen. I don't know how I never noticed this before, but you can see it's the exact same layout from what I've built. The red is the X, the blue is the Z, and of course the Y is green. Once you have that color code memorized, you could push F3 anytime, and you'll never get lost again. Another command I'm going to show you for how you can rotate something is deform. Now this works differently from just rotating in a number of ways. The main one being it doesn't require you to copy to your clipboard and paste. Instead it will actually deform and rotate it directly in your selection. In some ways it's better than rotate, in some ways not. You'll just have to figure out which command works best for what you're doing. But to get started with deform, we'll of course have to make a selection first. But for it to deform properly, we'll have to make sure our selection is a perfect cube. 
otherwise it's going to skew in ways that we don't want it to. Now to start the selection, we're going to have to find the center point of our build, since when we deform rotate, it's going to rotate around that center point that we select. I don't know where the center point of my build is, so I'm just going to select the top middle because it's close enough and it's not super big to where it's going to be too much of a nuisance. But I would say if you did have something larger than this that you could actually go inside and find the center point, that's what you would need to do. But once you have a good center point, go ahead and set your first and second position to the same block. And from that center point, we'll just need to outset it and expand our selection on all sides. And it will retain its cube shape. Make sure you have plenty of extra space between your object and the edges of your selection because we don't want this to get chopped off when we rotate it. Now that we have this selected, we're going to run our deform rotate command. And this is what it is. We're going to do the command deform rotate. Then in parentheses, we'll do x, z, then enter this equation. First, the degrees we're rotating it, then asterisk pi slash 180. So the only things we'll ever have to change in this command are the coordinates and the first number for the degrees we're rotating. Now, when we have our command like this, it says x, z, 30. This means we're actually rotating 30 degrees on the y axis. It's going to rotate on whatever axis you don't have listed in the first two. So if I were to change those first two letters to Y and Z, this would actually be rotating on the X axis. That's the easiest way for me to think about it personally. I'll explain it further in just a little bit. Let me go ahead and change this back to X, Z because I want to rotate this on the Y. So when I enter this, it will rotate three degrees along the Y axis and we'll see these results immediately since it is deforming directly from our selection. Now, when it comes to the direction of the rotation for this command, that's where it can get a little bit tricky. It works differently from the rotate command in that there's a couple different factors that can determine the direction of the rotation. First of all, there's obviously the positive and negative number. So that time it rotated it to the left 30 degrees, so if I were to add a negative here, it would obviously go the opposite direction to the right. Okay, now that I've done that, I need to point something out real quick. Another very notable difference between just rotate and deform rotate. Since we're rotating around the center point of our selection with deform, it doesn't always rotate back to its original shape if we were to rotate it back. However, with rotate, we can always reverse our rotation and still retain our original shape. So deform is a little harder to manage in that respect. Of course, you could always just undo it to get it back to its original shape, but I just wanted to mention this as a notable difference between the two. Okay, let's get back into the deform command. So going back to the deform command, the first way of switching the rotation direction is by using positive and negative numbers. The second way is just by switching the first two coordinates in our command. So depending on what order these are listed here, we'll determine the direction of the rotation. Let's go over here and look at our coordinates real quick to help you get a better understanding of how this works. This is what I've learned when studying this command and trying to figure out what determines the rotation direction. So if we look at this command here, we have x, y, 45. This means we are rotating on the z axis, correct? But we can know the direction of the rotation by the first two letters. It's going to start on the x and end on the y. We can almost draw an imaginary arrow here and say, okay, it's starting on the x and ending on the y. So the arrow is gonna go from here to here. So this will be the direction it would rotate if we run this command using a positive number. So if I were to switch those around and do y, x, obviously it's going to start at the y and end on the x. And they are still both rotating around the z axis, but this way we can actually see the direction of the rotation. I know that was kind of a long drawn out explanation. So if you're able to visualize this rotation in your head and if it helps you out, great. Or you could just do it by trial and error and switch them as you please. Just remember there's always two options for changing the direction. So let's go ahead and practice this. I want to rotate this 90 degrees up. Since we're rotating on the X axis, we'll need to use Z and Y, and I'm going to put them in that order so that they rotate upward. And we'll do 90 degrees on the X axis. And like I mentioned before, it is rotating around the center point of our selection. Let's go ahead and undo this and run the command again, only this time just switching those first two letters so you can see it indeed is changing the direction of rotation, so now it's going downward. So that's the basics for how to rotate with deform rotate. 
With the command I've shown you, you can only rotate on one angle at a time, but with the rotate command, you could rotate on all three angles at the same time. However, it is nice to see results without actually pasting them in. Both commands are useful in their own way. Oh, but wait, there's more. This video is never going to end. I have too much to explain. There is another use with deform rotate in which we can reshape what is in our selection. So what I'm gonna do is enter the same command, but instead of doing two different letters, I'm going to have two X's for my first two coordinates. So with those two X's there, it's actually going to shrink or stretch our selection along that axis. Now we're not dealing with rotation, so the direction of the red line is the exact direction it will be shrinking or stretching. So if I were to have this with X, X, 30, that's actually going to be shrinking our selection along the X axis. If I were to undo this, and if I were to enter a negative number instead, it's going to actually stretch it out. And this is a better example because you can clearly see it is stretching along that X axis, and it's looking kind of funny. So I actually have room, I'm going to redo this with 10 degrees instead of 30. Obviously, the bigger the number, the more the stretching or shrinking. So it will work for the other axes as well. So if I were to stretch it along the Z axis, I would just do Z, Z, minus 10, and that's stretched it so now it's a little bit longer. And let's do that once again for the Y axis as well. Now it should be a perfect scale of what it was before, but it's also handy if you just need to stretch or shrink something in a single direction. But if you wanted to scale the whole thing, I would not recommend doing it this way. Instead, I would just use the command scale. And I wanted to mention this command just because it's very similar to deform and also very practical to use. So scale does exactly what it sounds like. It will actually make your whole object smaller or larger. And if you do scale one, that is equivalent to 100% or its current size. So doing scale one will actually do no effect to your selection whatsoever because it's already scaled to 100%. But if we were to change that and say scale two, that would be 200% and twice as large. If we were to do scale three, 300% and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and scale this 300% and see what would happen. You can see it's enormous. It doesn't fit in my selection and it's just getting cut off. So it's very important that your selection is big enough to contain the scaled object. Otherwise, it'll just get chopped off like this. Now in order to make it smaller, we would just use decimals. So if I wanted this to be half its size, I would have to do 0.5 for 50%. That shuttle is actually really cute, not gonna lie. You can also use the decimals with whole numbers, so if I were to scale this to 1.1, that would be 110%. And yes, no matter how many times we scale or deform, we are more than likely going to have to go back and touch it up, because it's not going to ever scale exactly perfect. And that is the scale command, super helpful for adjusting the size of something. I find myself using this all too often when I miscalculate the size of what I'm going for. Thus concludes my very long explanation of how to rotate, deform rotate, and scale. I hope I explained everything well enough for you since I did just learn how to use the deform rotate myself just for this video and I actually really love it and I think I'll be using it more often. Special thanks to VoxFox for their excellent article on Planet Minecraft for how to use deform rotate. I think without that, we'd all be lost. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and have fun building and using these commands. Bye!